Hi, my name is Jonathan Zong. And I'm Josh Pollock. And we're excited to present our work on animated Vega Light, unifying animation with a grammar of interactive graphics. Consider these three versions of Gapminder, one static, one interactive, and one animated. These graphics show identical information, but they afford different levels of clarity, time commitment, and visual interest. During rapid prototyping, switching between these different chart types can allow an author to create a suitable explanatory graphic or uncover different kinds of insights in their data set. But while these graphics have similar semantics, we specify them using very different abstractions. In static charts, we use the concept of fasting. In interactive charts, we use event streams and data queries. But in animated charts, we use keyframes and transitions between them. And these independent abstractions yield a highly viscous authoring process because switching between each of these charts means translating your intent between these different concepts. We present Animated Vega Light, an extension to Vega Light that supports rapidly moving between static, interactive, and animated graphics using shared abstractions. To show how Animated Vega Light affords rapid prototyping across these different modalities, We'll walk through an example usage scenario involving a bird migration data set. So let's say you have a data set with birds locations at different days throughout the year. To get an initial overview of this data statically, you can visualize each migration path as a line with lines colored by bird species. This can be a bit visually overwhelming, so you might start out by adding some interaction. To add a hover interaction in Vega Light, you can define a selection that's populated on mouse over events. And it selects the current species of bird you're hovering over. Then you can use this selection to drive some conditional encodings on opacity and size so that your selected data stands out from the rest. Finally, you can add a tooltip encoding to show the species name on hover. So far, this is all standard Vega Lite. The static and interactive views help give an understanding of migration paths, but it's harder to figure out from the line where birds are at specific times. Viewing an animation of species location over time can help surface different insights. To make an animation version of this visualization, we could start by changing the mark type from line to circle. Then we create a new time encoding, which maps the day field to a time range which we specify here to be 10 seconds. And that's all we need to create this animation with animated Vega Lite. Implicitly, animated Vega Lite implements time encodings as selections that respond to a timer event, which drive a filter representing the data that's included in the current animation frame. If we want to enable more complex animation behavior, we can explicitly write this selection out. For instance, we might want to add trails to each point so that we can visualize some information about the bird's movement along a path. To do this, we add another selection representing the trailing points. And we do this using a custom selection predicate that we've specified to include the trailing 20-day window previous to the current date. Now, instead of filtering to only the birds at the current time, we use a filter to show all points within the trailing window. Then we use a conditional encoding to show the current point at full opacity and the trailing points at less opacity. Now to bring it all together, we can bind our animation selection to a slider that lets us interactively control the playback of the animation. We can also add back the hover interaction from before to inspect the trails in each frame. So the takeaway from this usage scenario is that the shared abstractions that we offer for static, interactive, and animated charts afford a low viscous author experience for rapidly switching between these modalities in rapid prototyping. But how did we go about designing animated Vega Lite? Well, one of the key inspirations of our approach was comparing two taxonomies from 2007, Yi et al's interaction intent taxonomy and Heron Robertson's animation type taxonomy. We found that the kinds of visualization techniques they referenced, like filtering, panning, and zooming, significantly overlapped, even though the taxonomies characterized them a little bit differently. And this correspondence led us to the design of Animated Vega Lite's core abstractions. The key idea of Animated Vega Lite is to model time in two different ways. First, to integrate animation with static charts, we can think of time as an encoding channel. 
And second, to integrate animation with interactive charts, we can think of time as an event stream. First, let's explore time as an encoding channel. Returning to the gapminer example with this concept in mind, we can think of the static version on the left as faceting out years in space, while the animated version on the right facets out years in time. Now, how does that translate to the animated Vega Light grammar? Well, by simply changing the facet encoding channel to a time encoding channel, we can switch from producing spatial facets to creating data-driven keyframes. We've thus reduced the complexity of switching between these charts to a single atomic edit. Now let's turn our attention to the view of time as an event stream. So if we compare these two gapminder illustrations, we can see that in the chart on the left, the year field is driven by a user using a slider. And on the right, the year field is driven by a timer. So the difference between the interactive and animated charts is whether a user is causing the data to change over time or the system is. At the level of the grammar, this looks like changing a user-driven event, such as a mouse over event, to a system-driven timer event. And in both cases, these events are translated into data queries that control the rendering of the data set at any given time. So just as in the static case, by generalizing existing concepts in Vega Lite, we're able to reduce the effort of switching between these charts to a single atomic edit. Now, when interacting with a data set, a user can select arbitrary collections of data points. But when working with animations, it's not so clear how to get that same freedom. So what we did is we exposed custom selection predicates to Vega Lite selections to allow users to precisely filter the contents of a selection for any given keyframe. And this lets you do very expressive animations, such as this Dunkin' Donuts opening times visualization you see on the right. Animated Vega Lite adds very few new language constructs. Its abstractions are designed to compose with Vega Lite's existing constructs. Many of our examples show the benefits of this composition. Because animation and interaction both use selections, any dynamic behavior that can be driven by an interaction can also be driven by an animation. For example, we can take this classic example of an interactive overview plus detail chart and turn it into the equivalent animated chart by changing the event type from drag to timer. To explore our coverage of interaction and animation techniques, we took this idea and applied it across different chart types. One surprising thing we noticed is that although these two examples, Gapminder and Bar Chart Race, look pretty different from one another, because of the way Vega Lite composes mark types and encodings, these examples have essentially the same spec. The main difference is changing the mark type from point to bar and changing the data set and the associated fields. And the scales and transitions are all inferred automatically. Coming back to the interaction animation taxonomies, we found that our examples cover most of the categories in both taxonomies. We were unable to support animations that involve changes to encodings over time, for example, converting a scatter plot to a bar chart. This is also a limitation of the original interactive Vega Lite. To better understand these strengths and limitations of animated Vega Lite, as well as how our tool sits in the larger design space of animation grammars, we adapted the critical reflections evaluation method from Satya Narayan and others from 2019. We recruited expert designers of four other animation grammars to deeply engage with our system, and we conducted semi-structured interviews before and after they used our tool. We had four main findings from the study. We found that one or two key examples tended to motivate animation grammar designs, and that these examples were often consistent across tools. We also explored trade-offs between different approaches to grammar design, such as natural programming and core calculus. And we also developed and explored two different axes of the animation grammar design space. Now, in the interest of time, we're only going to cover one of these four findings, seen in segway dominant abstractions but we encourage you to read our paper to learn more about these other pieces because we think they're really interesting. So the idea of C and Segway came from Thomas Lynn Peterson, the architect of GG Animate, who introduced these terms back in 2018. And simply put, a scene animation is one where data changes over time, but the encoding is fixed, like Gapminder on the left. A Segway animation, on the other hand, involves transitions between different encodings. 
The example on the right, which is taken from Gemini, involves changing a bar chart to a scatter plot. And this example was inspired by the R2D3 article on machine learning. We found we could fairly cleanly split animation grammars into one of two categories based on whether they better supported scene or segue animations. And animated vega light falls into the scene dominant abstraction category. To see why it might be possible to split animation grammars in this way, notice that scene animations tend to rely heavily on data-driven keyframes, where each keyframe has the same encoding. Scene-dominant grammars such as ours focus on automatically generating keyframes while keeping transitions between them relatively simple. On the other hand, keyframes and segue animations are often highly customized, and each keyframe may have a different encoding. In segue-dominant grammars, Users typically provide keyframes as individual charts or SVG files, and it's a system's responsibility to provide support for transitioning between keyframes. But even with this distinction, we found that the differences between scenes and segues wasn't always clear. For example, the Swimming World Records chart from Data Animator looks at first like it's a scene animation, but in fact, the authors of Data Animator expressed it using their segue dominant system by specifying explicitly a start keyframe and an end keyframe, and then using a data-driven transition to convert from one keyframe to the other. And so future work could explore more how to blend these scene and segue dominant abstractions to obtain an even more expressive animation grammar. Finally, we plan to contribute back to the community of DataViz practitioners by merging our animation grammar into the main Vegalite open source project so that everyone can enjoy making Gapminder animations and bar chart races. Furthermore, we hope that Animated Vega Light can facilitate future research on interactive and animated visualizations akin to the role the original Vega Light has played for interactive charts. For example, researchers may be able to use Animated Vega Light to better study mixed interactive and animated charts. Thanks.